This is the uh, Algebra 2 end of course practice test, or Tennessee end of course practice test. Question number 53. It's kind of a longer one, I'm not going to lie. 53 says, which is the correct binomial expansion of the quantity x to the 20th plus 1 fourth x to the 5th, and that's raised to the 4th power. Now, the reality is uh, they give you a formula for the, they give you the binomial theorem formula, which is a plus b to the nth power is the equivalent to the sum or summation terribly drawn starting at zero going up to the number of terms n over r times a and minus r and b would be r so it's sort of subtracting the term from the numbers and what's ever left over now the reality is I'm going to do it using Pascal's triangle <coughs> it's a little bit easier to come up with your coefficients that way at least it is in my head um, this 4 that I'm raising it to tells me which row of Pascal's triangle I need to go to the initial one is kinda like your the hook on your Christmas ornaments it doesn't really count as a row like you don't consider that oh and we've got to save and preserve this ornament you don't think about the hook very much you can they're so cheap you can buy a million of them so I'm gonna do Pascal's triangle all I'm going to do is spread out ones on the side and then do the sums in the middle. So ones all the way out. One and one is two. Two and one is three. Again, here. And then one, four, six, four, one. So uh, I've got this would not be, this is my hook. One, two, three, four. This is the row I need to work with. Now, what I'm going to do is use those as the coefficients, and since it's uh, already an add, which is co at least they gave us that, I'm going to um, add all those together. Each term is going to have the Pascal triangle's numbers as my coefficients. And then I'm just going to decrease, starting at 4, going down to 0, the exponent that I'm multiplying the first term by for each term. And then I'm going to increase, starting at 0, uh, the second term's exponent for each time. So my first term would be 1, of, would start with 1, of course and then I do x to the twentieth and I'm gonna raise that term to the fourth power my one-fourth x to the fifth I'm gonna raise to the zero power if you raise something to the zero power it just breaks out and gives you uh, one the number one so it doesn't it almost eliminates it essentially uh, for my next term I'm gonna use four as my coefficient then I'm gonna raise x to the twentieth and instead of doing four I'm gonna go down one and go to three. <coughs> then I've got one fourth x to the fifth, and I'm going to raise that to the first power. It finally gets a little a roll in this whole thing. The next one was to be six, and since there's uh, essentially five terms in this sequence, what we're going to do is there's the crossover where they're both raised to the second power. So that's what we're dealing with here. Raised to the second, uh, one fourth x to the fifth is also raised to the second. And I've got two more terms. I told you, I knew I'd run out of room. And I apologize for how I'm trying to make it as nice as I can. I've got 4x to the 20th, and I'm going to raise that to the first power. I've got 1 fourth x to the 5th, and I'm going to raise that to the uh, third power. Because this one is, the second one's going up every time. And the last one, my coefficient is 1, and I'm raising x to the 20th to the 0 power, so essentially eliminating it from playing any role in that last term. And then 1 fourth x to the 5th, I'm going to raise to the 4th power. So that's what the uh, binomial expansion sort of looks like, the binomial theorem. Now that I have all this ridiculousness set up, um, what I'm going to do is just start working it out and combining like terms and that sort of thing. Now, something I should mention that I, I've mentioned in other videos, if you've seen them, is that you do a little bit, uh, you do something a little bit different with your um, exponents than you do with anything else. So the order of operations tells me that parentheses comes first, exponents next, multiply and divide, and then add and subtract. Now, what we're going to do uh, with our integer terms, and in this case only the one-fourth. Now you'll notice that the, the coefficients that we tagged on as part of Pascal's triangle are not raised to any power, so we're just going to keep them uh, and eventually multiply them. But the one-fourth is in front of the x here, so that means I need to multiply, or I need to raise one-fourth to whatever power I'm supposed to raise it to. So I am doing exponents with the, the coefficient in front. Now the exponents, you have to do one uh, one thing less or one operation less so the thing less than exponents in this case would be multiply so when we raise a power to a power in, in this case we're going to multiply the two numbers together so in the first term 
I'm actually going to change color a little bit here just so uh, you can see that I'm going to another term. So for my first term, uh, 1 stays, so I can just put the 1 there if I want. And then I'm going to raise x to the 20th to the 4th power, which means I'm going to multiply. x to the 20th, or 20 times 4 is 80, so I get 1 times x to the 80th power. And as I said before, that 1 fifth x to the 5th, a 1 fourth x to the 5th to the 0 power just basically goes away because it'll take it to the 1 and then 1 times 1 is 1. In my next term I'm dealing with the idea of 4 which I would just write down but I'm going to sort of keep it in my pocket for a second. Then I've got x to the 20th times or x to the 20th raised to the 3rd power. I'm going to multiply those together. These are going to give me x to the 60th. Now I'm going to raise 1 fourth to the first power, so I'm going to apply that, which is 1 fourth by the way. I'm going to multiply that times the 4 in the front, so I'm going to take the 4 and not use it and not hold it anymore. 4 times 1 fourth gives you 1, so the coefficient on this term is going to be 1, the same, just like the first one. Now I'm going to raise uh, x to the fifth to the first power, so 5 times 1 is 5, so I have x to the 60th times x to the 5th. So when I combine those together, remember you do one thing less with the exponents. We multiply the coefficients. We're going to add the exponents, so the add thing here. So you get 60 plus 5 gives you 65. So my next term is going to be x to the 65th power. Things are looking very much like if you're looking at the answer choice, it's like it's going to be c. Spoiler alert, it is. But anyway, we'll go on to the next one. I'm going to erase all the stuff I wrote off of that term. The next term is the 6 term, so I'm going to keep 6 over here somewhere that I might use later. Uh, and then I'm going to raise x to the 20th to the second power, so multiplying those together it would give me x to the 40th. My 1 fourth to the second power, so basically I'm doing uh, 1 fourth times 2 here. Which is 1 half. No, I'm ridiculous. One fourth to the second power is one sixteenth. I'm losing my mind. I'm sorry. <laughs> so when I do one fourth to the second power here, I'm doing one sixteenth. Just try your calculator. I lost my mind there for a minute. I apologize for that. Um, the reality is the next step is going to be x to the fifth times. Uh, Two because it's x to the fifth raised to the second power, so you're going to end up with x to the tenth power here. So what we're really dealing with is x to the fortieth times x to the tenth, which is adding the exponents together, x to the fiftieth. So this term's exponent is going to be, or variable is going to be raised to the fiftieth power. Now I need to do sixteen times one sixteenth. I don't know what I was thinking before. When you multiply these two numbers together, you get three over 8. So that's my coefficient in front of this term. Sorry about that. I lost my mind there for a minute. I was thinking I was multiplying or something. I don't know. Even I get lost in these sometimes. Uh, the next one, I'm going to uh, look at my... I'm going to erase some of this other mess now that I don't need it while I'm standing here. And then I'm going to do my fourth term. Because I can remember that my triangle looked like 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. So I've already set it up anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, now I'm going to raise x to the 20th to the first power, which is 20 times 1. So the first part of that is going to be x to the 20th. And I'm going to raise 1 fourth x to the 5th to the third power. So I need to do 1 fourth, and I'm going to need to raise that to the third power. Because I'm multiplying the exponents, but 1 fourth is not an exponent. It's, a, it's an integer or a coefficient. So I need to raise it to the third power, and I'm going to get 1 to the 64th, which I'm eventually going to multiply by this 4. But I'm not going to worry about that for a second. Then I need to raise x to the fifth to the third power. So you do 5 times 3, which is 15. So these are the two parts that I need to work together. Uh, adding the exponents together, this term is going to be an x to the 35 term. And then I do 4 times 1 to the 64th, and I get 1 16th, which is shockingly looking exactly like C, just like I said it would. And the last one, I've got 1. Uh, I've got 1 times x to the 20th power, which is raised to the 0 power, and 1 fourth x to the 5th is raised to the 4th. Like before, the x to the 20th power being raised to the 0 just completely eliminates it. So what I'm really looking at is what's 1 fourth raised to the 4th power. So you just do 1 fourth and raise it to the 4th power. 
So you get 1 over 256. And then I just look what's uh, 5 times 4 because I've got x to the 5th raised to the 4th power. So it's finally x to the 20th. So really, when you have a binomial expansion, and by the way, you could have stopped much earlier. Once you got to about the third term, you could have quit here. Uh, there wasn't much left to, for you to really deal with, and A and B really didn't make any sense. They were just trying to trick you with those answers. So when you do the binomial expansion, set up the triangle. Those will give you the numbers that pop out in front. Uh, decrease on your first term the exponent you're multiplying it by every time. Increase the exponent on the second term every time. By the way, if this was x to the 20th minus 1 fourth x to the 5th, I'd have to change it to x to the 20th plus negative 1 fourth x to the 5th, because in order for this to work, it has to be plus in the middle, just FYI. Uh, the reality is just set it up like this, do all your multiplying and stuff and work it out. And it's pretty easy to do by hand, and you get your correct answer. I know it took forever, and I apologize for that, but it is what it is.